because for so long I tried to be somewhat cool. Um, but believe it or not, I was not the coolest kid growing up in school. I was not the most popular kid. And that kind of remains the case now in my professional career. So I'm kind of used to this lane. You know, you, you know, you know what they say, you stay in your lane. So I'm staying in my lane right now where I'm comfortable. <laughs> well, it's hard to embrace something like that on TV, I feel like. You know, I feel like you, it takes a confident person to be like, no, I'm not cool. And this is just who I am. It's not even that I'm confident. I just don't know any other way to act. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it's like if I came out here and tried to freestyle, you would laugh at me and I would do my best, but it would be horrible. That's, that's just not me. I could sing Hootie and the Blowfish all day long, but Hootie and the Blowfish, Darius Rucker, um, I first got into them when I was 13 years old because they got hot like in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had a pretty, you know, decent run. It should have been longer. Um, but man, there's just some bands you're laughing at me, but I'm serious. Some no, no, bands I'm not, I'm laughing. It should have been longer. Cause I, dude, oh, <laughs> you're talking to someone dude. trust me. You're talking to the right guy about this. I love nineties music so much. Like I was at a comedy club the other day and the lady started talking about talking badly about nineties music and saying that anybody who listens to nineties music too often is like a loser. And I wanted to stand up and get real mad at this lady. Cause I not only love nineties music, I that 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 first Hootie and the Blowfish album is I don't know if it's the first one the popular one that had all Cracker, the big songs Cracker yeah. Review Cracker Review yeah underrated album like my yes. stepdad was a huge Hootie and the Blowfish fan used to rock that on repeat for like a year and a half and I loved that album so no no I'm not laughing at you I'm more just laughing with you because I agree that that, that Hootie and the Blowfish did deserve they, they were they yes. got the love then, but they're kind of similar to Limp Biscuit. I feel like people go like oh, Limp Biscuit, but Limp Biscuit rules. Yeah, yeah. The, my only regret, my only regret is I never got to see them live, and it was it was harder, you know, when I was a kid. But I don't know if you recall, Hootie and the Blowfish reunited a couple years ago. Yep. And they actually came down to Tampa where I live, and I was like, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord, I'm going to see Hootie and the Blowfish live. But guess what? It was like With you my had my luck. It was yeah, a Monday. We were, Saudi, we were in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucks. And, I, and I'm like, is there any way that maybe they don't need me in Saudi so I could see Houdini the Blowfish? But that was just an internal conversation that never made it to the public, or else I probably wouldn't have a job right now. <laughs> but that man, I, oh my gosh! If you want to break my heart into a million pieces, that that moment was it. Like, take me away from the one chance I. I thought they were done. And the fact that they reunited after like 20 years and then I couldn't even be there. <sighs> That's a shame. That's a Tell shame. Softly. Does, <laughs> so are you a big 90s music guy in general? Uh, yeah. I mean, I try to, you know, I, 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 the 90s obviously will always have a place in my heart because that's kind of how I grew up. Um, but I, I like so many different genres. I mean, rap, uh, hip hop, classic, like indie music. I'm all over the place. It really just depends on my mood. You know, if, if and I'm, I'm weird, like if I'm feeling down, I want to hear depressing music. I just want to wallow in my sorrows. So I'll go get some like indie chill music so I can just sit there and stare at the wall and reflect on my life. And, yeah. I, I recently came to the realization that my that I wonder if like the music that I've listened to for so long has affected my mood because I love listening to depressing music. But then I'm kind of depressed sometimes and I go, yeah, well, maybe I should be listening to happy music more often I, i've been in that situation too because i'll listen to like mazzy star there's there's a kind of a, a 90s name for you i love i love mazzy star florence and machines like um those are groups that kind of really kind of get me in that mood where i'm really reflective but sometimes i'm um, just like you i'm like what wait a minute why don't i put something more upbeat and the moment i do i'm like wow i actually feel better this is so weird <laughs> That's why I try to listen to a lot of Lizzo. She's a very real uplifting uh, oh, musician, yeah. <laughs> real positive. Yeah. I know it's like more female centric, but it gets me gets me pumped. She's like real positive. Yes. Uh, by the way, since we're on the topic of the '90s, uh, and you're out in Cali, um, there is a '90s. Uh, it's called the Experience in the '90s. I believe is a museum out there, um, and it's uh, not far from San Francisco. Is that um, where is Oakland. that the thing that you took Oakland. a picture in where there was like the fresh pints of Bel Air? Yes. A throne? Yes. Yes. So that's in Oakland. Um, and I just I'm a big museum goer. So I just stumbled upon it and uh, I was like, oh my gosh, this is heaven. They've got, I mean, it's just everything you can they got the 90s music playing, all the pop culture references and posters and um cereal boxes, everything you recall from the 90s. So like if you're a fan or anybody out there, like I highly recommend it. Free plug to them. Hopefully I get a free ticket next time I go. <laughs>